five, four, three, two, one. Welcome to What the Shuck. I would just like to start off by saying uh, that this has been a really long time in the making and something I've wanted to do for a really long time. Uh, the goal of this podcast is to bring forward the ideas and the people who have helped me to change my life. Going from 400 pounds to 175 pounds and then gaining the weight back and strength to get to 195 wasn't easy. And most of the challenges that we face in life are not. But these people and the ideas that will be featured on this show will help you to navigate through the tribulations that life will throw you. But however, I also plan on putting a massive spotlight on the people who make Kentucky such a unique and cool place to live. My next guest is a four-time All-American, a four-time American Ninja Warrior, a Guinness World Record holder, and he is sponsored by Barstool Sports through the Rough and Rowdy pay-per-view and is known for doing one of the top 10 craziest things ever in combat sports for his backflip done in the first Rough and Rowdy fight in Lexington, Kentucky. My next guest is Brendan Kelly. What's up, man? Hey, man. Uh, You know, just... Chilling here in the Ninja Gym doing this podcast. Thanks for uh, coming out. Um, you know, it's uh, been fun watching your story and uh, how you've ran with your challenges and got to the point where you are of basically becoming half the weight. So it's, uh, it's, all, it's always something that I love is watching someone um, just really fight for what they want and get there because at the end of the day you are where you are in life because of the choices you make you know you can make for whatever excuse you want for where you are but at the end of the day it's all on you so uh first off just like to congratulate you for getting where you are and it's it's uh been really cool watching you you know and it, uh, it helps when everyone is on their own journey doing something going and striving for something great because when you strive for something great you're always going to run into obstacles and to be that 1%, you got to run through that obstacle. Everyone else quits, you know, mm-hmm. that's why they don't reach their goal. There's only one difference between the person that makes it and everyone else. Of course, the person that makes it just never gave up. And that's literally how you become the 1%. Everyone wants to say, you know, well, I did try hard, but I still didn't make it. And it's like, no, you tried until you got tired. Tired doesn't equal hard work, you know? It's how hard you work when you get tired. How many reps do you have left in you when your body says no? How many hours do you have left in you when your mind says no? You know, that's what makes the difference. The ones that can push that at that moment are the ones that are, are truly going to make it. At the end of the day, it's all a mental game. You know, you're, the person you stare back in the mirror every single day is going to give you your toughest obstacles in life. So, um, I'm currently going through mine, you know, trying to open this Ninja Warrior gym. And uh, I've literally took the biggest leap of my life because I, I know betting on myself, I have a better chance to succeed and get to my final goal. Uh, so I invested every penny I had into opening this Ninja Warrior gym. Uh, and because I did, now people were able to see the passion I had and the work I was willing to put in to get where I am today with what little capital I had that uh, yesterday I was blessed, um, had a guy come in and right away wanted to get in for 50000 which gets me essentially to where I need to be to open it to where this is what I'll be doing for a living, you know? Yeah. I, bought, I mean, I bust my butt so I can train and have fun and just live life the way I want to. And so uh, starting to slowly cash in on my one of my main goals in life. So it's kind of cool to, like I said, watch you hit, hit yours at the same time, you know, uh, as I'm, as I'm reaching for mine. So it's, it's been, it's been a blast, man. Dude, that was such an awesome answer. Um, like, so in this story of mine, you were such an integrate part because you were doing this crazy stuff that I'd never seen anybody do. And I was like, what the hell is this guy doing? Like, I would be literally go into the locker room and be like, who's the guy that's running on the like treadmill backwards? Like, what is this? What is happening? Is he like trying for the NFL? Like what is happening? Like, is he the best like backup, like the best like cover cornerback ever? Like, and we just started talking and I was like, dude, this guy's story is incredible. Like he, um, he's been an awesome athlete his whole life, but he's always been like 
you've always felt that you needed to go to that next level, even though you were you had achieved great things. You like I said, you were a four time All American in college. Um, you are a four time American Ninja Warrior. Now you're opening up this gym, and then you're like, but these people at first didn't understand your vision of the gym. And that's such a unique thing to me because that was the same thing with me. Like when I was losing this weight, people didn't understand when I would put all this stuff on the internet and be like, yo, you need to like work hard and you need to go hard. You need to do this. You need to believe in yourself. People are like, who are you? Like you're this fat guy. But I was like slowly like living by the words I was saying and getting better each day. And just to see someone who's constantly doing that too was just awesome for me because it reaffirmed that, even though it was a completely different goal that this dude was crushing his goal because he was putting in this tremendous amount of work. And I just had never seen anybody like doing stuff like that. And I was like, all right, I got to get to know this guy. And so we've obviously become pretty good friends and dude, I'm super proud of you because you like you, you had so many obstacles in this mission that could have like you, led you to be like, all right, I'm giving up and I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing and just keep doing fitness stuff. But you said, all right, people don't understand this vision. So I need to start doing these world records. And that's awesome because you need to do some, that's like your calling card is essentially what you're doing. You're like, here's who I am. I'm showing you how much harder I'm willing to work than everybody. Cause I'm about to set this crazy world record running backwards the fastest mile ran backwards. And then you're like, Oh, and then while I'm doing rough and rowdy, uh, I get the chance to fight in rough and rowdy. I'm going to do a backflip. And it's just like the courage to do these things, man, just like elevated me every day. And that's why Mike was on episode one. And that's why the people who I've had on just have been so influential to me and just making me follow my dream. So it's awesome to see you doing yours and do this. Like we've probably been friends for a little bit over a year now. Yeah. And to like see like where things have gone. It's just like incredible, man. It's just for both of our stories. It's one for the books like you know one day um like it's gonna be awesome just to look back and be like dude remember when we were doing this like oh now look where we are like you have this awesome super gym in lexington and i have this super successful podcast and it's just having the courage to have that vision and to follow through with it um a huge thing for me was doing my goals for the uh the last couple years was just like setting my goals and making sure that i followed through with them and it, by achieving those goals, it made me courageous and it made me believe in myself. And because of that, I was like, all right, let's level up. Like, let's keep leveling up. And you're doing the same thing, obviously, dude. And it's just, it's truly incredible for sure. Oh, yeah. I mean, you got to, once you get to the top of the mountain, you know, you got to find a new mountain. That's the thing. Like what you said, when you, you know, you, once you conquer your goals, you set new goals and you start to realize that, you know, you can do whatever you want as long as you put the time and effort into it. So, I mean... The whole reason, like you said, why I pushed to break the records and stuff was because even while I had been successful in, in what I've, whatever I've done, it doesn't, it doesn't get you to the next level. And I'm still overlooked because of my size and stuff. So, I, so therefore, I knew that I had to do something really just out there to catch the attention. And so I just looked up at some records and stuff and I was, saw the world record for most pull-ups in 24 hours. There's a 7,600. And I was like, man, I can do that. That's just a, that's just an effort-based thing. So I was, I was like, that's literally just how bad do you want it? So you have to put in the work for a couple months, you know, trained six months, went for it. Easily was on pace. I, think I was 3,300 and eight in the first eight hours. And then I sprained my AC joint and had to, had to stop. So, Talked to my coach who was a, um, got his doctorate in physiology and we talked about how to train for it and stuff. He's like, man, why are you going for such a hard one to begin with? He's like, why don't you just look up world's fastest mile ran backwards or something? And I was like, okay. So <laughs> look it up. I'm like, uh, well, it's uh, 554. I'm like, eh, I can do it, you know? And my coach was like, all right, well, let's, let's, Go, uh, go out to the track uh, tomorrow and just run a quarter mile backwards. See how it feels. See if uh, you're at the pace you need to be, you know. Then we'll see, like, how realistic it is. So I do it. Get to the quarter mile. I mean, as tough as could be. Uh, and uh, But I was I was able to hit the time I, I needed to with not, like, being dead, dead, dead. But in all honesty, if you ever try to – if you ever on a track, try to run 200 meters backwards – 
in 45 seconds. <laughs> and that's a six minute pace. Just try my, my roommate and a couple of friends, they come to like train with me to, you know, like just so I'm not completely bored all the time training myself. And, uh, I remember my roommate was trying to hit it and, uh, about 30 meters left hit your legs just give out. Like you're, you're not used to, you're not designed to go backwards. So mm -hmm. his legs just like his uh, quads wouldn't pick up anymore and just fall straight back and like nailed his head on. <laughs> and, uh, that was just one of the funniest things, but, um, it was, um, it took a literally a year of, of truly training for it, um, to get the physical strength needed. Uh, to get there so at the end of the day like when I finally got to do it I already knew I was going to break it when I when I said it like or like on the day of I was like all right uh, I'm, I'm easily strong so it was like one of those things where like it wasn't necessarily as gratifying in the sense of getting the world record it was it was the a year of the hard work that I put into it saying like I already know I already I got this like it was easy and uh so that was pretty cool. And then, um, uh, Hey, you said the, the flip. Um, so I got tagged in the, you know, before Facebook. we, before you get to the flip, dude, <clears throat> I think that that's so awesome. What you're saying there, like at the very end, because it just is like, I was seeing you do these things that I didn't see other people do. And I was like, it was so confusing at first because I was like, this is crazy. Like, and you, then you, like I said, you told me your story and, um, the thing that was blowing my mind was like you said, just getting those muscles to be prepared for something like that is like having to retrain your body in a way. Oh, yeah. And I was just like, you have to be a freak athlete to do that. And that's why I was so impressed by like the work you're putting in because I like, you'd be like, yeah, this is where I am now. This is where I'm going. Like, this is my progress. And you were telling me, and I was like, dude, I can tell that like you're getting better and better and better and better. And I, like you said, but this was the most important part. You were talking about how when you were making it through that training, that that training was like doing more for you than like the actual achievement when you got there. Then, And that was with me too, with my story is just like, and I know that there's so many other people that have stories like this, that what they're going through um, in the process is like really the most beautiful part of the whole thing and where they learn the most. And, you know, once you got to that goal, you're like, Psh shit i got this for show sure. like i've been doing this i've been grinding every day like i know i got this and that's just like it had like just that hard work and just dude just being from and getting into fitness and like doing that has like helped me to learn how to be a really hard worker like i always was like a, a decent worker but like now i'm a really hard worker and now i'm a smart kid and I'm a hard worker and i'm willing to do like i'm not saying i'm smart but like I'm willing to work really hard now yeah. and it's just I'm willing to go to that next level that I don't think anybody else is and you had that same story but um yeah let's go to the flip now uh that was awesome uh that was like when I first had met you and I was like holy shit this dude is crazy you just did a backflip in the middle of a boxing match which I know like the guy was like not like a killer boxer but like it was still insane that you had the courage to literally do that and you didn't you hadn't really boxed before, so like you know, he could have literally just knocked you out, or like you said earlier, you could have just fallen on your face, and people um, would have just laughed at you, and you would have been on the the shitty highlight reel. But like, it still would have been like part of your story. But like, you did, you landed it, dude, and you beat that dude's ass. So like, tell me about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, uh, so I mean, I got tagged in on Facebook uh, by a friend, and he was kind of like almost playfully being like, Oh, I bet you won't sign up kind of deal. Tag me and my other friend. Um, and, uh, I was like, Oh, it's in Lexington. All right, I'm down. And so, uh, cause I saw the weight classes. I was like, one of the weight classes was 140 to 160. And I, uh, I weigh about one, uh, 165, just like natural, good condition, like shape. And I'm like, all right, I gotta lose five pounds. I'll be the strongest 160 guy. I no way around it. And so I'm like, okay, uh, I'll do it. So I sign up, get a call right away. Cause I, you know, I put the, I'm American Ninja Warrior thing. So they're like, Oh, well, okay. All right. Yeah, we'll this guy on. All right. So, uh, I get it. The guy's like, Hey, yeah, let's do a, let's do an interview. Uh, come out, uh, meet me, which it's really weird. They always meet people in like parking lots. And so, like, <laughs> and so yeah, I do my, 
<laughs> interview at the Kroger parking lot, in, like <laughs> Richmond Road, and uh, I feel like that's homage to like the first epi- or the first one. Oh for yeah, sure, so they wanna they wanna kind of keep the roots of even uh, though it is of the West Virginia, yeah, like uh, even though Barstool because it's still it. yeah it's still a strong man competition because they don't they don't necessarily want to have like the, um, <laughs> the we're live best, yeah we're live at the. Um, Ultimate Ninja Athletics uh, training facility. My heater's kicking off. Yep. Yeah, uh, but it's awesome here, by the way. But continue. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, they wanted to keep the, the strongman competition thing. Looks like they don't necessarily want the best boxers. I want people to go in there and, and swing. Because, I mean, the best boxer, you're going to be more technical and you're not going to throw as many punches. Um, and But it's three one-minute rounds. So you're supposed to essentially try to take someone's head off, which they're very smart in the sense of, People always want to be have that like primal instinct or get to watch that. And so like they're bringing back, in my sense, the modern day of the uh, Coliseum, True. which is very very smart. You know they have because in the Coliseum they had you know most of it was just, like slave fights where uh, and then you had your like um, your big fights that you know were were the marquee ones and that's literally how they do it. They have thirty fights and they make like seven of them marquee and then the rest are the ones that they just pay like. Two hundred fifty dollars or five hundred, but the marquee ones like now the ones that I get are five thousand dollars, and the most I'll ever fight is three minutes. It's like okay, why the heck would I not do? Uh, and but uh, so uh, I do the interview, uh, and I do like a running gainer in my interview and uh, and stuff. And so um, the guys like yeah, I'm sure that, sure they want you. Uh, uh, well, here's my number if you never need anything. So, like, next day I text him and say, hey, is it, <laughs> is it legal to do a backflip in the middle of the fight? And he's like, well, if you land, I mean, if you if you do it, they, they can't stop you. Like, and so I'm like, okay. <laughs> I was like, oh, that's a good enough answer for me. No so, rules. Yeah, so I was, like, I, was like, I was like, all right, well, right, I said, right now I think I'm, uh, I'm going to do it. And I told him that, and I was like a month in advance. So I trained, um, you know, on my flipping a little bit more and uh, started, I got sponsored by Everybody Fights for a little bit. Uh, so let me train there for free. Um, Everybody Fights. Yeah. So uh, try to prepare there. Then uh, I just started telling my friends, I said, hey, I'm going to do backflip. Told people that I just ran into. I told all the people at EBF, you know, hey, I'm going to do backflip. I'm going to do backflip. Like that way. I had to be held accountable to it. And so, because uh, my, my big thing is if, if, you, if you don't put it out there and have someone hold you accountable to it, it's the easiest thing to back out of. Especially because I knew it was going to be scary as crap. You know, this is my first actually ever boxing match ever. I'm in front of 5,000 people and 100,000 plus watching on pay per view. So I'm like, all right, all right. The milkman. Yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and so, uh, <laughs> You know, I get in the ring, and my whole thing was, all right, as soon as I get in the ring, I'm going to do a running gainer. I'm going to get the people excited. So I did the running gainer, landed, and uh, got, like, hyped or whatever. You know, I come out. And that's the one thing people don't understand. Like, when you come out in a boxing ring and all the lights are on you, you can't see one thing outside of the ring. It is the craziest tunnel vision. All you hear is the noise, your opponent, and it's, like, almost, like, gleamed, like, it's surreal. Like it's one of those things where you you never know the feeling until you actually do it. So I come out like a like like crazy. And I can you know I go out a little fast. I'm I'm hyped up as can be, and that's the hardest part is controlling it to begin with. Because I mean, unless you're used to it, and you can, it's, no, very rare someone can compose it. <laughs> so yeah, sure. um, I come out. I'm a little crazy, you know, very unorthodox. Then I back him down. And I'm, I, I hit him and I, I turned him. And as soon as I, but the entire time as I started, I was like, gotta flip, gotta flip, gotta flip, gotta flip. Cause I was like, if I, if I don't keep reminding myself, I'm not gonna flip. So I'm like, where's my opportunity? Where's my opportunity? Where's my opportunity? And then, uh, so I, I, cause that was the thing. I was like, if I go crazy at him to begin with, I'll probably get an opportunity. And so I go crazy at him and I do it. I back him, back him down. And then I hit him and I got him to turn a little bit. And I knew he had to do like a full turn to like get back to look at me. And so I hit him into the ropes. As he was turning, I pushed off of him. 
just backed up and did the flip <laughs> and I landed it. As soon as I landed, I was so freaking just still adrenaline and rushed. I just kept throwing and kept throwing and kept throwing. And the funny thing is everyone thought I, I sucked because I looked so, because I just got so hyped and I was like, I got to knock him out. I got to knock him out. And good thing, is, good thing is I tired myself out a little bit. Um, <laughs> and, uh, um, uh, coming to in, right into the second round because I was tired. I was able to think again. And I was like, okay, I'm just going to one, two. As soon as we come out, I one, two wrecked them and then, uh, knocked them or out in the next 10 seconds. So it was, uh, it was cool. It was a fun learning experience. And then I got a, got my exposure with them, uh, which kind of ramped things up. And, uh, now, uh, get a fight for them every couple months and, Fun as, fun as can be, man. Yeah, man. And that's been an awesome story, too, is you like as you're simultaneously trying to break this world record, you're also training to do boxing and then also having the courage to do a backflip. And it's just like <clears throat> there's so many opportunities in life that you can consider. Maybe not that you're going to be doing an actual backflip, but you just have to have the courage to have that leap of faith that you're going to be like, hey, um, I've trained for this. I've done the work. I put it in. Now it's here. Like... And it's just like with the world record, it's just like you knew that you had done it and you like you saw your opportunity open and you took it. This is yeah. it's so awesome. You got to go for it, man. That's it. And um, obviously that success worked out because you got to keep fighting for a couple more fights. Um, how's that going? And like, what's the future looking like with uh, that? Are you going to have any more fights coming up? Or uh, Yeah, I should have a – I'll be in the next one. Not the, uh, not the one in the Super Bowl for Miami, uh, but – Goals to right now um, do rough right twelve with them, um, which is kind of good timing because uh, opening the gym and stuff. I haven't really had much time to train. You know, literally put a uh, hundred twenty hours in over the last ten days. So um, it's been busting my butt to get this ready, and so kind of slowed that kind of things down. But um, this goal will, will pretty much get me set for my life. Uh, while rough and rowdy is just just fun and can get me some exposure and yeah, stuff exactly. and build my personal brand, but there is uh, some wordage right now that um, they can't talk much about it. But maybe possibly doing a, a, some version of a show with Barstool coming up um, in the spring. But um, they said from like contract stuff, they can't talk too much about it yet. So I I can't really talk too much about it either. Yeah. Um, but uh. That's kind of where things are at right now, and then just opening the gym, and um, I'll be breaking the pull-ups record uh, in April. So, been training for that again. Um, now having my own gym and being able to get to do all the training here and stuff, and um, should make it a lot easier because I'll have all the time in the world to train. <laughs> You'll literally be living in your gym. Yeah, yeah, pretty which much. is cool. This place is awesome. Um, where is this located at? It's a uh, 120 Payne Street. Um, that's Lexington, Kentucky, and so it's about two blocks from Rupp Arena. <clears throat> and uh, it's a 11,000 square feet, 24 foot ceilings. We got a 18 foot warp wall, uh, which that's the one where if you get on the show, it's automatic ten thousand dollars. Got some pretty cool. Uh, unique obstacles that there's no place here in Lexington or Kentucky that has anything like it. So it's been fun creating it all. Uh, I had my buddy from the show, the uh, handyman ninja come up and he literally makes ninja board gyms for a living now. So we, we busted our butt for the last 10 days and he just flew out this week. So, so obviously this uh, American Ninja Warrior and the uh, rough and rowdy like bar stool thing kind of had a collision course because you became known as the back the black flip ninja. Yeah. Um, so it's, um, this gym is so cool. So like, well, obviously the American Ninja Warrior show was a huge influence to you as well. Like, do you want to like, I mean, what do you have to say about that? I know it was a super cool opportunity. Do you ever plan on doing that again? Or like, what's up with that? Oh yeah. I mean, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll try out for the, not this season, but the next season. So it'd be a and W 13, because they already had the deadline for a and w12 but i was more focused on just getting this open but uh you just always have to have a new interesting story with them to pretty much get picked 
Um, but if you're successful and you can show, and so now um, that I have this, it'll be pretty easy to get back on the show again. Um, but I got this because there was nowhere to train in Lexington for it, um, or pretty much in Kentucky. And um, I saw it as an easy way to make enough money to do this for a living and, and do something I love for a living because well, it's as contagious as, as can be, you know. Kids love it because uh, they get instant gratification with every obstacle they complete. So most kids need a 50% success rate to continue at whatever they're doing. Um, and uh, whenever you complete something here, it's, the, it's boom, it, and it's the funniest stuff. Like you just watch kids' faces light up over it. And then you, get, you just can be a little stunt double for a day for a lot of people with no real um, chance of injuring yourself. You know, you, you're going to fall into a foam pit or there's crash padding. or But then you get to test your abilities and see if you really got what you um, think you have. Uh, but Ninja Warrior, the sport humbles a lot of people because they'll look at it like, yeah, I can do that. And then they try to hold their body weight up. And they're like, oh, my gosh. You know, yeah. <laughs> and then it's like. Uh, if you if you can't do 15 pull-ups in a row, the elite obstacles will be hard for you. Like, and that's the thing. Uh, like, I can do two. So yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, and that's one of the things where it gives you a a goal. That is that, and that's, that's a huge that's goal mine too this year. Yeah. So you have a goal um, so to get the obstacle, and you're like, all right, well, all right, I get here with it. I can, do, and everything you have easier versions of it to get you ready for that so um it's a you have your stepping stones with it and so uh i mean you got tons of balance crap here tons of uh tons of upper body strength mobilization you know that's going to fine tune all your stabilizer muscles that you or you can control your body weight you got walls you got to explode up you got things you can flip off of and stuff so you just it's just fun man <laughs> it's a fun way to work out yeah for sure and that's something, I mean, this gym is going to be an amazing opportunity for me to work on uh, my total body strength, like your oh, yeah. core strength, because that's a huge goal of mine this year is to um, not only to just get faster, but also to just work on my total strength because I want to have functional skills. Like we were talking about earlier, um, you know, it's awesome if you can lift 400 pounds, but it doesn't really matter if you can't like run or you can't like do like put your own like yeah. deodorant on or something. <laughs> You know, but with all this, dude, you're like the version of like a true athlete. You're like the Greek warrior, you know, just the guy that is ready to go to combat because you literally, I mean, if you just look, if you um, see this gym, it's just all these obstacles take like, you ha you can't be weak in any yeah. body. And if you're weak, then you're not going to be able to really do it. And yeah. It's super I mean, we got. Cool. We do have obstacles for the kids. Yeah, yeah, also, for kids. All, yes, yes, but yes. it also. I'm talking about the elite ones. No, but I, yeah, like the, the elite the ones. Yeah, the elite here. ones will humble you real quick. But there are obstacles for everyone. But then there's a. We have a, 150 feet, of a, of a rings course, which uh, you got to connect yourself. Attachment of nine rings to get to the end, and when you get to the end, it sends you around the entire wall. Um, Pretty cool stuff, but it's gonna take you some strength to get to the ninth one. <laughs> but you get, but then you got your levels of like how many rings you can get to and stuff. So like it's one of those things. Like again, it's like a reward system. Like I, oh, I got seven rings this week. Oh heck yeah, I got to eight rings. You know. Then you finally get it. And it's like, oh my gosh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. Dude. Yeah. yeah. So uh, it's just fun, and then like you literally get to watch people's face just light up when they get the stuff. So it like makes that much more rewarding doing, doing it for a living. You know, like I make people happy that we're doing something that I love and as fun as can be. Yeah. And, uh, you're going to also be having Cabrera come here sometimes for boxing. So that's cool too. Yeah. 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 No, it's Cabrera. So we're going to have, uh, I think Cabrera's corner pretty much. Okay. Cool. Uh, so that's awesome. It, yeah. He'll have, uh, Boxing classes, Krav Maga, uh, like kids' gloves stuff. Uh, and then we're going to try to be the first, like, or there's no true boxing training gyms anymore. They're all showcase, like, uh, it's there for the look, not, like, true instructional of how to become a fighter. Um, so Cabrera's pretty passionate about that, and there's a good amount of 
there's a good community around it. Uh, you got to think, Muhammad Ali's home is right up the street, and it's pretty sad how, like, the area hasn't had the true, like, boxing gym and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm not going to say we're going to be claimed to be a true boxing gym, but he's he's a hell of a coach. He is. And, he's a really good coach. Yeah, he and he knows, he knows that. He knows I mean, he could, so he can, develop, he can develop anybody here. You know, we'll have all the stuff needed, all the uh, – I mean, he's already got half his stuff moved in, which is – pretty much all you need to train boxing and then you got the whole gym here yeah this is gonna be an awesome setup just the i don't i mean it's not even all put together now but i can just visualize like what it's gonna look like in like a year or two it's gonna be badass oh yeah i'm so excited for you it's uh definitely some fun stuff um do you have what what are your like big goals for uh this upcoming year for 2020 big goals for this year uh obviously you're working on the world record yeah but uh world record uh get on another show um make this gym uh get the numbers that i projected and from that hopefully be able to open one in knoxville and then one in louisville um and then ultimate goal is to essentially my next big goal is to retire in five years in five years yeah so All right. so what i do is i i i build one of these gyms up i create it um i usher a uh, potential GM to essentially then carry out my vision and my, uh, you know, uh, goals with it um, of how exactly how to run the gym and, and uh, what we're passionate about. And so then open one Knoxville for a year, then move up to Louisville. And then from that, uh, you hire a GM at all three spots, you check on them. Uh, you just come in every once a week or something like that. And then as long as you've done a good job and stapled the way it's supposed to be ran, then you just sit back. And so that's the thing. Then I, I mean, I'm breaking and not doing anything. And then my ultimate goal in life is to raise, uh, you know, family and uh, be able to invest all my time in my children's lives to make them the ultimate version of their selves. Yeah. You know? So, uh, cause you look at all these kids uh, that, uh, you see uh, doing all these amazing feats and they, it's like they weren't that good if someone worked with them yeah you know like it's not true. like they were just like that it's like no they put it the hours in behind that you didn't see it but someone was there putting the work in with them and it's the same way uh like if you know if you want to be doesn't matter what your goals are in life everyone has different goals but the level of effort you put in is going to equal your level of results you know and so it doesn't matter what like Financial, successful, physical strength, again, effort. And that's how you're going to measure what your results will be. Yeah, dude, and I think that's uh, a definitely awesome and, like, great outlook to have as far as for your goals, for sure. I know that even, like, extremely, extremely talented people, people just look at them and they're just automatically, like, they're really talented. Like LeBron James is a perfect example. People are just like, he's a freak, bro. But like, he probably works he harder than him. everybody. Yeah. You got to think he spends seventy five thousand dollars a year in just rehabbing his body. Exactly, and it's just like, like yeah, it takes dedication. Yeah. He takes. He just. Yeah. I'm not a big LeBron guy, but I'm just like, there's dudes who are it, anybody who t- does the level of work that you're doing. That's what got you to where you're doing this now, and that's why you're able to break world records. That's why you're able to do the things that you're doing and making all your dreams come true. It's not because. You're saying like, oh, I'm not like this, like, you know, I I come from humble beginnings and stuff like that, and I just had to work really hard, and like I literally like have always been overlooked, but like I constantly am defying these people who overlook me, and you're not like negative about it at all. You're literally just like, all right, I'm not going to use this to be negative. I want to. It's a huge thing I always talk about is the bricks that you get handed in life. Don't use them to like weigh you down. Use them to like build something with them. Like yeah. one of my favorite uh, lines is, uh, you know, like, all right. Uh, it don't matter if there's, you know, no path, you know, I'll create my own path. It's like, all right, that's fine. You didn't believe in me. All right. I'll get my, when I get my opportunity, I'll still shine. You know, it's just, I'm going to keep trying until I get my opportunity. So I'll get it eventually. And eventually you just got to keep yeah. chipping at it, man. Yeah. And so, owning your craft. Yeah. That's the thing. Like, just cause, just cause what you're not seeing in one person's eyes, the way that you are, you know, how many people get passed up all the time and then prove people wrong, you know? You're always, you can always find someone in a worse situation than you that made it. 
So if they can do it, why can't you? You know, like it. You'll you'll get your shot if you keep keep at it. You know. And I literally was talking to someone the other day, and I was just like, um, I was like, what are your goals? What are your goals? And she was talking to me about them, and I was talking to her about mine, and I was like, you know, like this is really important to me to like also talk to other people about their goals because. Like you said, just a sense of holding yourself accountable. And for me, I know that um, the whole reason I was able to do what I was able to do is because I had a sense of accountability because I was putting it on Instagram, I was putting it on Snapchat, I was putting it on Facebook. And my friends were like, this is annoying. Like, why are you doing this? And then they like started to understand, oh, crap, like, it's working. Like, yeah. And he's actually, like, developing the story. And really one of the huge things I looked at it was, like, I need to be the hero of my own story. I need to like write my own story. I'm writing an epic story right now where I started off and I was this piece of crap and I wasn't a bad guy, but I just like wasn't who I was supposed to be. And I was like being like, I didn't take the um, moral obligation I was supposed to with my goals and stuff. And I was like holding myself like zero, like I had zero accountability for myself. And I was like, but I want to do this and I got to do this and blah, blah, blah. But I was like doing zero of the work. And dude, it's just like, I told her, I was like, you know, just last year, I couldn't, I'd never done stand-up comedy. I'd never started a podcast. I'd never ran an eight-minute mile. I'd never, like, done all these things that I'm able to do now. And the whole reason I was able to do that is because I actually set that course. So this year, I'm like, I want to raise $40,000 for charity. And I want to be able to run an uh, under six-minute mile. And I want to be able to uh, run a marathon or a triathlon this year. And I want to, like, do 50 episodes of the What's Truck podcast. And it's just like, it's really important to put these and to speak these into existence because you manifest like the laws of attraction. And that's like, obviously so important for us. We obviously think of this in a similar way because you've touched on it several times when we've hey. talked. But um, dude, I've had an awesome time talking to you, man. Um, I will close out with just uh, giving some of the information on your gym. Um, but do you want to go over a little bit and just tell everybody a little bit about what's going on and like when you're open and yeah. stuff like that? Yeah, so I'm gonna have a, a soft. I'm gonna launch a kind of like Facebook thing for a soft opening on February first. Uh, basically, it'll be like the first 50 people to sign up. We'll kind of get a spot. Um, then kind of see how that that goes because uh, I want my product when it's open to reflect perfect. You know, so therefore uh, it's been great so far. I've uh, had had a class of like 16 kids come today. You know, and uh, everyone left with absolute great reviews of it and stuff so uh that's pretty cool um every, literally everything's been so far a five-star review and everyone's like oh my gosh this is this is gonna be the place this place you is know? awesome and so it's really cool uh in that sense but uh ultimate goal is to be open uh full-time by march um but could be earlier just depends on um getting all flooring down and padding down um stuff because one thing I want to be is as safe as possible. You know, the same sense of where I said you can fly with no no regrets, you know? Yeah, um, that's a cool quote. Yeah, <laughs> and so uh, going down to Alabama this week to pick up all that stuff. So um, then going to have that soft opening and how that's ran and see what uh, needs to be modded from there and then pretty much make a true opening mark from that spot. But yeah, I'm open for classes right now and birthday parties. Um, and we're at 120 Payne Street. Like I said, there's two blocks from Rupp Arena. Um, and if you want to check out, we got 25% off of all uh, uh, all things online right now. Uh, that'd be Ultimate Ninja Lex, L E X dot com. And what about uh, you on Instagram and Facebook, stuff like that, as far as. Yeah, if you guys want to follow me, I uh, post some. Pretty cool stuff of me doing at my gym and uh, boxing stuff and records. Uh, that'd be uh, Brendan, B-R-E-N-D-A-N, then K for my last name, 1989, the year I was born. All right. And do you have any fighters you want to call out? <laughs> uh, I mean, you know, I would love to still fight David Gaynor, um, but I don't know if they, I don't know if they're picking him up anymore. He's just got it wanted to talk trash to me and then literally ever since I talk, started chirping back he shut up and so I, smacked the shit out of his ass yeah so I was just like alright well man I appreciate you coming on so very much um, like I said you're just such a huge influence of mine and like I like the whole point of this podcast is for me to um, just to be able to 
put people on and uh, to spotlight the people who are doing stuff like you are, following your dreams, making your goals one to uh, not just come to fruition, but exceed them, like to blow them out of the water. And that attitude is so necessary because you know what? Like there's gonna be times when you're working on your goal and you don't reach it, like just with your, when you're trying to do the pull ups, man. But like, that's part of your journey that one day you'll look back and when you do reach it, you'll be like, you know, I did all those for me to get to this. You learn from it. Yep. Uh, but thank you so much, dude. I appreciate it. Love you, dog. Uh, but if you're listening to What the Shuck, I hope you all are enjoying this podcast. Um, this is the eighth episode, and we are live from his gym. Um, like I said, it is the Ultimate Ninja Athletics Gym, uh, and it is on um, 120 Payne Street. 120 Payne Street. And um, I'm, I'm really excited about this, and uh, we'll probably be doing a few podcasts from here, and I hope to actually get on uh, Cabrera and uh, Brendan at the same time. I think that would be really cool. Oh, yeah. Uh, but thank you, man, and have, I hope you all have a great day, and uh, thank you for listening. Appreciate it. Don't forget to like and share. Dude, I think that the, the rock wall is going to be the coolest part. Yeah. That thing is sick. Yeah. I'm so excited well, about that. that. It's a whole-